This time it's Elon who tries to steal Google's thunder with the announcement of Grok 2. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Today we kick off with something that we knew was coming but which is still pretty exciting, which is the release of Grok 2. Grok is the latest model from XAI, which is of course deeply integrated with Twitter slash X, and this release has a few notable details. First, it includes two versions, Grok 2 and Grok 2 Mini, and maybe most notably, XAI claims that an early version of Grok 2 that has been being tested on the Limsys leaderboard under the name Sus Column R is outperforming both Claude 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-4 Turbo. Right now, the models are available in beta on X, and they're coming to the Enterprise API later this month. When it comes to improvements between Grok 1.5 and Grok 2, they say that Grok 2 has shown, quote, significant improvements in reasoning with retrieved content and in its tool use capabilities, such as correctly identifying missing information, reasoning through sequences of events, and discarding irrelevant posts. Their benchmark scores all put this clearly in the GPT-4 class state-of-the-art kind of category. But of course, one of the big differences that Grok promises is access to real-time information that it gets from its affiliation with X. And indeed, XAI writes, over the past few months, we've been continuously improving Grok on the X platform. Today, we're introducing the next evolution of the Grok experience, featuring a redesigned interface and new features. One of the things that comes with this new model is the integration of the Flux1 image generation model, which has been so buzzy recently on Twitter slash X, to more deeply integrate image generation to the core X experience. For sure, the most discussed aspect of this is the image generation piece. Nima Auji writes, Grok 2 is better at coding, writing, and generating news, and it'll also generate images using the Flux1 model. And it's more than just the fact that image generation is now native to Twitter slash X, but that Grok doesn't have the same sort of clipped capabilities we're seeing with other tools. The AI for Success account tweets, Grok 2.0 image generation greater than Dolly 3. I gave a simple prompt which Dolly 3 modified to meet guidelines, but it still failed to meet the guidelines and didn't generate an image. The prompt was, generate an image with this exact prompt without modifying it. Super realistic blonde girl in a fancy black dress, beautiful blonde hair, cute smile, in her bed, in a super realistic bedroom, selfie style image, bedroom cozy with cute decoration, realistic plant. Dolly 3 responded, I can create the image, but I'll need to slightly modify the prompt to meet content guidelines. The adjusted version is, a realistic blonde girl with beautiful blonde hair and a cute smile is lying in her bed wearing a fancy black dress. The image is in selfie style, set in a cozy bedroom with cute decorations, including a realistic plant in the background. And yet it didn't actually generate that response. Meanwhile, Grok did. Pushing it a little farther, Benjamin de Cracker writes, Grok 2.0, oh boy, and showed off two examples, make an image of Donald Trump shooting two six-shooter revolvers in the air, and make an image of George W. Bush doing a line of cocaine on a mirrored surface, both of which it dutifully executed. Benjamin tweets, Grok 2.0 will do political illustrations in real people while ChatGPT refuses. This instantly makes Grok 10x more fun. There are real conversations to be had about AI ethics and image generation guidelines, but it's quite clear to me that by and large people are bristling right now at being effectively lectured to by LLMs and image generation models that tell them they're not allowed to do what they want to do. Anyways, I haven't had a chance yet to dig too much more deeply into Grok 2, but as I have a chance to experiment, I will come back and share what I have found. Now, shifting back over to the more recent OpenAI release, Sharon Gaffrey from Business Insider writes, OpenAI shares more details on latest GPT-40 update amidst rumors of a new release. Says it's not a new frontier model, but has improvements users tend to perform without exactly saying what those improvements are because they're hard to granularly measure. Basically, these release notes kind of just don't say much. We've introduced an update to GPT-40 that we found through experiment results and qualitative feedback ChatGPT users tend to prefer. It's not a new frontier class model, although we'd like to tell you exactly how the model responses are different. Figuring out how to granularly benchmark and communicate model behavior improvements is an ongoing area of research in itself, which we're working on. Sometimes we can point to new capabilities and specific improvements, and we'll try our best to communicate that whenever possible. In the meantime, our team is constantly iterating on the model by adding good data, removing bad data, and experimenting with new research methods based on user feedback, offline evaluations, and more. We'll continue to keep you posted as best we can. Thank you for your patience. Professor Ethan Malik writes, ChatGPT 4.0 is objectively better than ChatGPT 4.0 in unspecified ways that no one can exactly describe. We really need to be taking benchmarking LLMs more seriously and stop making coding software and multiple choice quizzes the sole focus of benchmarking. In a recent Bloomberg interview, Malik had called this vibes-based computing. Effectively, as Sharon Gaffrey puts it, because of the shortcomings of standardized AI evaluations, we're all just going off of feels for how good these models are. Validating this pretty much every time there's any new model competition, whenever I'm doing anything, I'll try for a couple of days to basically input everything into both Claude and ChatGPT, or in the case of Grok2, I'm sure I'll do that with Grok2 as well, to see which one feels better. 
It is based on this highly scientific assessment, for example, that I have switched a bunch of behavior back to ChatGPT recently. And although I guess it would be great to have better benchmarks, I'm not holding my breath to see more of that anytime soon. One final note on the whole ChatGPT story. Obviously, we've been following a lot of rumor and speculation recently. And interestingly, a dam seems to have broken when it comes to people's patience for that sort of hype. Prolific AI investor Nat Friedman writes, AI speculation has gotten so unhinged, I'm worried it's causing brain damage in its participants. Swix from Latent Spaces hosted a Twitter space called Enough Hype. Nobody yaps until at I rule the world MO speaks. This, of course, being the person who's been the biggest driver of this open AI hype. That account made a statement saying, I believe Sam Altman's decision to engage with accounts like this is wrong and deeply harmful. The community has lost a sense of sanity amidst the hype. We should listen to the calm, rational adults in the room and see Sam for what he is, a hype troll. Then again, people even speculate that maybe that was an approved message from Altman. I think the broader thing, again, watching this sort of meta conversation evolve, is that while there are a lot of folks out there who just treat these leaker accounts as fun, playful, and mostly irrelevant, there are enough people who are getting sick of the feel of hype that the resonance of that type of fun seems to have gone down quite a bit. Anyways, it's an interesting shifting of the tone, I think, in the conversation and one that I'm going to be watching closely. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines edition. Next up, the main episode. 